Welcome to the lectures on cathode reproduction engineering. In the lecture on anode ground bed, we discussed the relation between soil resistivity, anode dimension and the relation to the ground bed resistance offered for cathodic production of engineering structures. It is however important to understand how the anodes perform in order to have better anodes for cathodic production of structures. So, in this lecture we will discuss these aspects. We will start with function and requirements of anodes, then we will move on to understand how the sacrificial anodes are performing and then we will have a very brief discussion on the impressed current anodes. To start with the functions and the requirements of anodes. This is the diagram we saw in the last class itself. What you notice here is the anode in the cathodic production system. The anode is very small, it is buried in the soil and the current leaves the anode and goes through the electrolyte and then enters the cathode. We have two types of anodes available for cathodic production of engineering structures. They are the impressed current uh, cathodic production anodes and the sacrificial anodes. In both these anodes, the main function is to, to effectively pass a current in the ground and the medium. That is the main function of this anode. However, when you talk about the sacrificial anode, it has to do additional function. One is it has to provide a driving force to pass a current between the anode and the cathode that is given by the potential of the sacrificial anodes and then it also has to give the current that is given in terms of the anode capacity. Whereas in the case of impressed current cathode production system, the rectifier provides the driving force, the rectifier provides the current. So, when you talk about sacrificial anodes, we need to look at the two important characteristics. These characteristics are driving force available for the cathode production of uh, the structures and how much is the current capacity these anodes would give so that we can design a particular life required for the structures. I am going to spend a couple of minutes in discussing the role of the polarization diagrams in order us to understand what is a good sacrificial anode and what is not an acceptable sacrificial anode. This is a famous uh, events diagram. We all know the potential versus log I current. The lines given here are the Taffer lines. The Taffer relations between the anodic current and the cathodic current in any electrochemical system. Now, I would like to point out here that this particular Taffer line that is represented here, which is m giving us m n plus plus n electron, is the anodic Taffer line, how it varies with respect to the polarization. On the same metal, of course, there is a reduction reaction occurring that is probably here in H plus combining the electrons giving rise to N H2 plus 2 actually. Okay. And you can also have other cathodic reactions. The other cathodic reactions are like the oxygen reduction reaction or reduction of water that can occur when the metal corrodes. So, when you have a cathodic reaction represented by these kinetics and the anodic reaction represented by these kinetics, you have a corrosion potential established by the metal and then the corresponding corrosion current density. Now, the metal that has to be protected cathodically, the potential of this, this metal that is corrosion potential has to be suppressed towards a more negative direction here. 
How is it possible? It is possible by connecting the structure to a sacrificial anode. Now let us look at the four different characteristics of the anodes. Okay. Now in these four different characteristics we have taken two different anodes of differing corrosion potentials that is with these anodes are buried in the soil are buried in the uh, electrolyte they establish a potential called the corrosion potential we call E car here. Now the, the characteristics of the anodic dissolution of these anodes are given here. What you notice here the anode 1 when you raise the potential it polarizes steeply that means the tapel slope is higher in this case. The same anode when you increase the potential it polarizes at a much lower rate actually. That means with increase in potential it derives more current as compared to the anode 1 here. We also can have a another anode of lower corrosion potentials you can see here wherein you can establish a higher polarization as represented by the line here uh, anode 3 here or you can also have a lower polarization that is seen here. Okay. So, depending upon how it polarizes the net potential is changing. Now as you notice here that the anode 1 when galvanically coupled with this metal here it establishes a corrosion potential I mean galvanic potential somewhere here that is small drop in the corrosion potentials and as a consequence the reduction in corrosion rate is less significant. But for the same E car if you take this anode 2 here the corresponding intersection point you notice by this line here leaves a galvanic potential of given over here. For this galvanic potential the corrosion rate of the metal is given over here. So, there is a significant drop in the corrosion rate of the structure the metal that we are talking about. But take this case of the second anode the, the, the other anode for example having same E car but whose polarization is quite fast quite steep but it establishes a galvanic potential slightly higher than the anode 2. That means it is able to protect the steel structure at a much lower capacity as compared to that anode it is having a low E car itself. So, E car is one factor but what is more important is how the polarization really occurs I mean the anodic polarization really occurs. Coming to this anode 4 it has got a lower potentials and it is less polarized and so it gives you much lower galvanic potentials as a consequence the metal is protected much better as compared to anode 1, 2 and 3. So, in summary we can classify the sacrificial anodes as the one having high galvanic potentials what is seen here and high polarization. You can also have high galvanic potentials but lower polarization you can also have low galvanic potentials and high polarization and you can have low galvanic potentials and high polarizations. So, the efficacy of the anode depends upon both the galvanic potentials and as well as the polarizations. So, if you have I am sorry this should be lower polarization anode should be of lower polarization I just want to make a correction here this should be low polarization. Okay. So, ideally the anode 
the characteristics should be as follows. Lower gal galvanic potentials are lower E car potentials and lower polarization. Let me take this pointer again. It is to be noted however, there are some cases where low galvanic potentials or low corrosion potentials are not wanted especially when we are talking about use of high strength uh, steels and uh, in marine conditions you do not want the potential to come down the production potential to come down to very low value. As you notice that when the metal is when the metal potential is brought down to lower values the amount of hydrogen that is evolved on the surface is also increasing. So, one has to also take care of the problems associated with over protections. So, which means you can have a combination of the potentials and the polarization so that you can also take care of the hydrogen evolution you can reduce hydrogen evolution. In the case of high strength steels the hydrogen evolution on the metal surface can lead to absorption of hydrogen and then as a consequence the hydrogen embrittlement. The other important property of the sacrificial anode is the current efficiency. The current efficiency is given in terms of the amount of current that is available for protection of the structures. So, when the metal dissolves the electrons are liberated and these electrons travel through the circuit to the structures and these electrons are used to bring down the potentials. But it is possible that a part of these electrons are used to liberate hydrogen or it is possible that a chunk of anode drops from the surface. As a consequence there is a loss in current efficiency. The current efficiency is given by this equation the percentage current efficiency is equal to the actual current upon the theoretical current multiplied by 100. So, this talks about how effectively the anode is used in protecting structures against cathode protection. Let me move on to the next important requirements or the characteristics of sacrificial anodes that is the anode current capacity. The amount of current let us say amperes given over a time period that is the coulombs of current that a given weight of metal can offer to protect the structures. So, this is given by a, a, a term which is called as pound per ampere year or kilogram per ampere year. So, what does it means? It means how much how much weight of metal is required if one has to pass 1 ampere of current for 1 year. So, this is one of the parameters used to calculate life of the anodes. We will see that later how this can be used to calculate the selection of anodes for, sacri uh, for uh, sacrificial cathode protection system. Now, this parameter kg per ampere hour ampere year can be uh, calculated if you just follow simply the Faraday's uh, relationship actually. Now, uh, I do not want to go in details about how to derive this, okay. but uh, you can simply follow the relation that is the weight of the metal that is dissolved or deposited is uh, equivalent to the uh, electrochemical equivalent E multiplied by the current that passed in amperes and the time in seconds. So, it is possible for you to calculate using this equation what is the consumption rate of a metal and um, so that is can be uh, can be calculated much easier. So, what is summarized here is the various characteristics of the sacrificial anodes. Uh, we, we have seen before that there are three types of uh, sacrificial anodes based on the magnesium and the zinc ok 
ok. Then we also have it is based on aluminum zinc tin, aluminum zinc indium and aluminum zinc mercury. Now, aluminum is, is uh, known to be a reactive material, but however it passivates in order to remove passivation they add, they add activating elements and these are like tin, indium and mercury. So, they destroy the passive film formed on the aluminum surface so that the current output uh, is sufficient to protect uh, the structures uh, intended structures. As opposed to aluminum zinc and magnesium they do not passivate so uh, they dissolve uh, actively. So, the alloying elements are not added for deep passivation of aluminum and magnesium. The other important properties required for the sacrificial anode is the density and this density is required when you are going to use these uh, anodes for marine applications especially for ship hull because higher the density it adds more weight, more drag to the transporting vehicles ok. So, the density is another important factor whenever uh, the structures are mobile. The other factor we saw just now is the galvanic potentials you may call as a corrosion potentials. You can see that zinc and aluminum the potentials are very much similar, but however magnesium has a very high negative potentials. So, the driving force offered by the magnesium is significantly higher as compared to the driving force offered by zinc and as well as aluminum alloys. The other important factor in sacrificial anodes and especially with respect to aluminum alloy sacrificial anodes is that that aluminum alloy sacrificial anodes can be used only for seawater applications and in other environments they start passivating and so um, it does not provide um, the, uh, the, the sacrificial action at all. The current efficiency of these uh, uh, aluminum alloys and magnesium alloys are given here I am sorry it is uh, uh, what is not given here. The aluminum zinc mercury alloys have a current uh, efficiency close to about 1995 and indium could be in the range of about 8085 and aluminum zinc tin is uh, having lower uh, current efficiency. That is very much reflected in the energy capacity that is uh, given in terms of ampere hour per kg. Here the current capacity the energy capacity is, is given is inverse of the consumption rate that is how many ampere hour 1 kg of this particular sacrificial anode can provide um, to, to uh, protect the structures. Uh, the energy capacity and consumption rate are inversely related to each other. Now, one more point that one likes to, uh, to note is that the how much current these anodes can give that is how many milliamperes of, uh, of uh, the current per unit area of, this, of the anodes is available uh, to, uh, to protect the cathodic uh, structures it depends on the soil resistivity. In highly resistant soils the, the anodes dissolution tendency is, um, is reduced and so the deliverable current is reduced as the soil resistance is increasing. And uh, there are various methods to evaluate the, uh, the, the performance of these anodes for aluminum I given here the electrochemical test RPB401 is, is, um, uh, is a test method employed to qualify aluminum anodes. The other factor that also comes into picture is in terms of um, the, uh, the cost of uh, these alloys the magnesium is the most expensive that comes then the zinc and then aluminum is the least, least expensive among all this. But notably even though aluminum is least expensive the energy capacity of aluminum is much higher compared to magnesium and zinc. So, that is why al aluminum is a most more preferred uh, sacrifice anode for marine applications. 
So, we talked about the characteristics of these anodes. In actual applications, these anodes are designed in terms of multiples of uh, ampere here actually you know. So, so that means the weight of these anodes would depend upon the density of these anodes. Zinc is in terms of multiples of 30 pounds, magnesium is in terms of 17 or 20, 22 pounds because these are all made uh, easy to calculate uh, the, uh, the life of these anodes. And these anodes are also available in different shapes uh, so that uh, you know it can be uh, fixed to the structures, it can be flush mounted, it can be brass lit kind of anodes and it, it can be done. The other important factor that you will see later is the purity of the metal affects the current efficiency. These anodes, uh, the, in, the inserts are like steel or galvanized steels are used as inserts uh, which makes the electrical contact between the, the cable and the, uh, the sacrificial anode. And when doing so, one should ensure that no stresses, holes and cracks are formed in these inserts. Uh, it can be uh, insulated, these inserts can be insulated. Actually in fact, even if you do not insert, uh, actually even if you do not insulate, these inserts are going to be, uh, uh, these inserts are going to be protected from corrosion by the galvanic action of the sacrificial anodes. The important point uh, with respect to sacrificial anodes is the calculation of uh, sizing of anodes for given applications. What should be the dimensions of the anodes, how many number of anodes should be chosen and how long these anodes will serve uh, in protecting the structures and require some calculations. Uh, there will be a supplemental lecture and we will be looking at that in details. It is to be seen that the sacrificial anodes cannot be applied uh, everywhere. It depends upon the resistance of the soil. As you notice that the magnesium has very high galvanic potentials. Hence, when the resistance of the soil becomes very high, uh, only the magnesium anodes can be used and zinc cannot be used at all in um, high resistance soils. And other important factor is that zinc has self regulating effect which means when the current demand is more, when the soil becomes wet for example in seasonal conditions and the zinc can deliver more current. When the uh, soil becomes dry, when the current requirements becomes lesser, the current output from zinc becomes less. So, it has a self regulating effect and so the structures are not over protected when zinc is used. On the other hand, magnesium, whenever you use magnesium, uh, one has to take care of the over protections. Should the current is more, it is required to apply some resistance to bring down the current output. Let us spend a few minutes on the impressed current anodes. The impressed current anodes are of two types. One is a consumable anode, other one is a permanent anode. The consumable anodes generally used are like steel scraps, it, it does not cost much actually. Okay. But when you say consumable anodes, it does not mean that the dissolution of the anodes or the steel scraps, the main function is not to provide current. There will be still a rectifier till the current is being passed and the dissolution of these anodes are un, uh, unwarranted and uh, is not a requirement at all. Okay. But however, because of higher voltage applied, these anodes they dissolve actually. And uh, these are generally used in uh, pure, pure water and sea water conditions, these anodes are used. The, as compared to the consumable anodes, the permanent anodes are used predominantly. When you talk about permanent anodes, it does not really mean, we will see later that these anodes are stable 
um, free from corrosion and disintegration. Uh, there is a certain amount of disintegration of these anodes with respect to time and so the permanent anodes here refers to um, a much longer life and it is contrasted with the steel scraps, the consumed anodes which have really very finite life it is supposed to be replaced very frequently. <coughs> In the permanent anodes there are uh, different types I have listed here, I do not uh, need to go through all of them uh, in detail here and um, you know uh, it is of importance that predominantly say graphite, isilicon anode and platinum and platinum alloys or platinized niobium for example is used, metal oxides that is titanium insoluble oxides and um, lead oxide uh, anodes are used and carbon fiber uh, anodes are used and these are all the permanent anodes. The table here gives uh, two important parameters which are required for selection of uh, the impressed current uh, cathode production anodes. One is the current density, how much of current density these anodes can provide. You can use a rectifier, you can increase the voltage and as a consequence the anodes can get polarized and more current can be delivered. However, by raising the voltage the anodes are not going to give a corresponding uh, increase in current because they disintegrate sometimes they start passivating. What is given here is the range of current densities these anodes can provide. Of interest to us is that the platinum and uh, plat you know, platinized substrate they provide the highest amount of current density. And so, the, the area the surface area of the anode required for cathode production is less in this case. Of course, platinum is uh, very expensive. Uh, you also have the graphite anode, it is very highly conductive compared to many of these anodes, but the graphite is, is more fragile you can, you can talk about. And uh, the, the titanium insoluble anodes this actually is called metal, mixed metal oxide anodes, iridium ruthenium oxides are coated by thermal decomposition technique and um, it gives uh, very high current density. Um, it is in somewhere like a platinum wire I would say I think here the cost is significantly lower as compared to the platinum metal. The consumption is a very important one we, we can look at here ok and as you notice that the, the graphite consumption is, is quite significant um, as compared to the, the platinum. Okay, the platinum is expensive but so uh, titanium insoluble anodes is an alternative uh, to the platinum wire or pla and platinum plated substrate like uh, niobium. So, some of the disadvantages of these anodes are the graphite is fragile we know that and uh, I think this will go here I think. Uh, iron, silicon, chromium can be passivated actually. So, it can reduce the current now happen and when the graphite is fragile and you will see that the, the drain current from the anodes will reduced. You will recollect that the drain current measurements is an important survey um, to, to identify if the cathode production system is working very well and uh, such anodes like graphite even when you bury. Uh, you know it can get damaged and so the anodes may not function adequately. So, as your iron, silicon, uh, chromium anodes uh, they are uh, I mean they are really uh, passivating and uh, they are reasonably stable, but however um, if they are passivating too much then the current output will be reduced. Um, similarly, this will go here ok and lead uh, anodes can also passivate and can bring down the current output of these anodes. In all these cases whether it is an impressed current um, cathode production anode or a sacrificial anode in both the cases we have also seen in the last class itself that backfill is an important component. The backfill is 
very much required because it lowers the resistivity of the, uh, the anode to the soil actually. In fact, it also increases the effective anode size when you are calculating the resistance offered by an anode at a ground bed for example and you take the dimension of the backfill, you do not take the dimension of the anode. So, uh, backfill is, is a very important aspect of the uh, these uh, sacrificial and impressed current anodes. The backfill of course is, is uh, not a requirement when you talk about seawater applications where the seawater is very highly conducting. We talk about backfill only in the case of soils and where um, these structures are buried in the, in the earth. The difference between the sacrificial anode and the impressed current anode also stems from one fact that the cables that connects the uh, anode on the pipeline they behave differently. In the case of uh, sacri sacrificial anode the potential between the pipeline or between the earth on this cable is, is always uh, negative. Whereas, in the case of uh, impressed current anode cathode production system this cable the potential between this cable on the earth is always positive and so it is tend to corrode. In fact, the current density if you look at here is significantly higher on this cables and so it has to be electrically insulated and if it is not insulated then um, the it is it quite fast that these cables get snapped and the current is not going to be um, flowing through these anodes. And, and so there are various uh, requirements people use. Uh, one of the requirement is 600 volt rating uh, suitable for this one that is there should be no electrical breakdown um, in the insulation of that. This uh, the, the um, the insulating cable also should be resistance towards corrosion and degradation actually right. And these cables are buried in the soil and so uh, these polymers mostly used uh, they are they permeate uh, uh, the chlorides and uh, water and so they will start disintegrating. So, there should be more resistance against um, the corrosion damages and in fact, uh, uh, when you have deep well groundwater anodes where the potential is quite large and, um, and you have chances of uh, chlorine evolution taking place on the anodes. You know that chlorine is a highly oxidizer and, um, and so uh, there has to be a jacket to isolate the, um, the cables uh, from exposure to the chlorine gas without which the cables can get damaged and um, lose the function of transporting current to the anodes. I thought I will spend a couple of minutes about the, the sacrificial anodes. What we should do for developing efficient sacrificial anodes? It is uh, not from the engineering point of view, it is from the development of sacrificial anodes maybe from material science or metallurgical point of view. Now, if you look at a sacrificial anode, we have seen already there are two kinds of requirement. You should offer high driving voltage and of course, we also indicated that uh, in some cases high driving voltage can be a problem because it can lead to hydrogen evolution and hydrogen embattlement. Barring this, you would like to have high driving voltage so that the structures receive enough current from the anode. The second is it should not the anodic curve of the sacrificial anode should be less polarized and it is a very important requirement. In this case zinc performs even far better the zinc it does not anodically polarize. Uh, in fact, if you look at the, the marine structures especially the ship hulls, zinc is used as a reference electrode because uh, uh, zinc it least polarizes 
anodically. That means when you are going to measure the potential of the hull with respect to zinc electrode, zinc, zinc is a uh, zinc electrode and which is relatively having a negative potentials, the, the potential of zinc electrode does not change during the measurement basically because it polarizes much less as compared to the other sacrificial anodes. The other important parameter uh, in deciding selection of a sacrificial anode is the current efficiency. We would like to see that the current efficiency equals is theoretical current efficiency. So, how do you achieve this? This is achieved by various alloying elements and uh, one of the important aspect is the passivation of these anodes. We do not allow the passivation of these anodes, passivation increases the polarization. So, those elements which encourage passivation with increases less dissolution of the anodic reaction should be avoided from alloying. The other factor is there are certain elements which are added to this alloy, they become source for hydrogen evolution. The metal when dissolves, the electrons are released and these electrons travel to the structures and it reduces the potential of the structure. However, the electrons so released on the metal surface can get consumed if another cathodic reaction can occur. This reaction can be H plus ions present in the water can combine with this and can form hydrogen here. So, when you add some alloying elements, it can form some noble phases and these noble phases are the preferential sites for hydrogen evolution reaction to bring down the current efficiency of these anodes. I have just listed here some examples in the case of magnesium, copper, nickel and iron should be kept all should be lower than 0.0038 percent. For aluminum and zinc the most detrimental element is iron that should be reduced. There are also some elements which are beneficial uh, which I have listed here. For zinc it is aluminum and silicon and of course aluminum and silicon to be added together or aluminum can be added you know alone they have same effect and in the case of magnesium aluminum and zinc are also beneficial. The other factor which we have seen in our own laboratory is that when the sacrificial anode dissolves the attack occurs along the grain boundaries the grains fall and so there is loss in metal as a consequence the current efficiency decreases. This is called as intergranular corrosion it could happen in zinc alloys and it can happen in magnesium, it can also happen in aluminum. So, there are certain impurities which go to the grain boundaries and then promote this reaction. So, it should be suppressed in order to reduce the loss in current efficiency. So, the control of impurities in the alloys are the key to reduce the current loss to increase the current efficiency. There are also anodes uh, required wherein it resists the falling especially in sea water applications that can be falling there can be organic matters uh, you know the uh, living organisms can get deposited on the surfaces. So, the elements like copper, arsenic, antimony and lead when they are added to this uh, the sacrificial anodes. Uh, maybe it is zinc or aluminum for example, they bring down the, the fouling on the anodes. So, before we end the lecture, we can summarize what we have discussed so far. We have to remember that there is a difference between sacrificial anode and impressed current anode in terms of their functions. The sacrificial anodes its function is to provide the current to also provide the driving force whereas the impressed current anodes they act as only electrical conductor. The potential drive the driving potential and the current 
they are derived from the rectifiers. When you come to a sacrificial anode, the following are important the characteristics. You should worry about polarization. The anodic polarization of the sacrificial anode should be lower. The corrosion potential should be as negative as possible and it should offer high current capacity so that the life of this anode per unit weight is quite higher. We also seen how the metallurgical variables you know control uh, the above properties of uh, corrosion potential, polarization and current capacity. When you come to impressed current anode system, the current output which means how much current per unit area the electrode delivers is an important parameter. The other parameter is that the stability of these anodes against dissolution, okay. lower the dissolution, the longer the life of these anodes. And because these anodes uh, exhibit a positive potential with respect to the soil and they require to be insulated well without which these uh, cables uh, would uh, would get, get corroded and so uh, the current will not be passing through these anodes. When you come to the sacrificial anode, life estimation of the sacrificial anode is an important factor. We call sizing of the sacrificial anodes. We will discuss this in a supplemental lecture wherein we will use uh, that lecture to clarify the concept of polarization the concept of resistivity measurements of anodes and also sizing of sac sacrificial anodes. And with this I would like to end my lecture and thank you very much. <laughs>